everybody, hundreds of millions of people have photo IDs. You have a photo ID to go to college. You've got a photo ID uh, for your, your driver's license. This is no invasion of privacy. This is not singling anybody out. This is a routine, systemic kind of approach. We have the, the reason that photographs on these EBT cards make sense is the same reason that it makes sense on a driver's license. It reduces the risk uh, of deceit and fraud. Could this be used as a legal form of ID? I don't know what the definition of legal form of ID is. A lot of these people who have these cards are older people. They're sick, they're not able to take care of themselves, and they have caregivers. And as such, they might not have the same caregivers as a day. So there might be five, six people who check in on them in the case of the week. If you're only allowing a card or two cards, and the caregivers change so much, don't you run the risk of some of these people not having the, what they need? And is there going to be some sort of exemption for someone in that situation? Yes, there's an exemption for anyone over the age of 60 actually in the legislation. And uh, I will. Yeah. yeah, there's also an exemption for uh, disabled folks and as uh, victims of domestic violence. Um, so I, I think one of the things, and you know, when we do legislation, we learn things. Right now, these cards are issued, and all you need to use them is the card and the PIN number. So if you know the PIN number, you can just pick it. There's no, and you're not allowed, the retailers are not allowed to ask for identification under federal law. So that's why they're so easily trafficked and sold. So if you're a holder of one of these cards, and maybe you sell, maybe it's just simply stolen from you, and your benefits go away with the card because you don't have it, um, that it's very easy for someone to go in and use those and buy whatever they want or resell it. Here's the pin for this particular card. So in any circumstance um, where an individual, as you're describing, they're going to be able to say, hey, my pin number is ABCD, and that person will be able to go down to the store and use that because those folks won't have a picture ID by definition in the bill. The ones that you described. Given the fact that so many of these grocery stores have automatic uh, uh, credit card swiping machines or chip machines, what are the chances that a, uh, a cashier is even going to see the card? Well, they have to use the card. And, and let, let's, one of the things, and I think someone asked a question. Would a cashier ever have it in hand, though? Yeah, the, the, one of the, the, the reason why this is going to work in some instances isn't because the cashier is going to take it, look at it, see whether that's you or not, and say, aha. The reason is someone is going to say, this has my picture on it, or someone else's picture. There's a picture of a 40-year-old African-American woman, and I'm a 20-year-old white person with red hair. Maybe I can't use this card. And in some instances, the cashier is going to see the card, it is going to call the fraud. And the fact that that may happen is it, it's like a lot of other things. Not everyone who buys alcohol is under 21 or, or is over 21. Some folks are 19 or 20 or whatever. And they don't always get the right check. And a lot of people get away with it. Okay? But a lot of people don't try because they know someone may check their ID. So there's a deterrent effect in merely having these photographs on there. And again, for the people who would use it. So, you know, this isn't a situation, as we've indicated, where in every circumstance the person is going to get caught, or really in a high number. Um, the retailer in the alcohol situation has an incentive because the cashier gets cited criminally if they sell alcohol. And that's not going to be the circumstance. 